It has finally happened, guys. We have full sets of all four houses of the Hogwarts House Editions in paperback and hardcover. Hey, Harry Potter fans, Peter Kenneth here. Welcome back to the Potter Collector channel, where we are a community of collectors. The day has finally arrived, and my prediction came true that we would receive both Half-Blood Prince and Deathly Hollows in 2021. Now, if you haven't seen one of these House Edition videos before, originally Bloomsbury, which is in the United Kingdom, planned to release each of the Harry Potter books in their 20th anniversary year. But that would have meant we'd have to wait until 2027 for Deathly Hollows to be released in this edition. I'm glad they decided to rebrand the books and call them just Hogwarts House Editions, not 20th anniversary editions. So if you have not seen those other videos and want to check out each of the different books and all of the different artwork that they feature, yes, each of the seven books and each of the different houses features different cover artwork as well as different artwork on the insides of the books. Check the description down below. I have put links to those other videos if you want to check them out. This video is sponsored by Into the AM. They make premium, high quality apparel. And let me say, this is a soft shirt. You guys know I'm very picky when it comes to t-shirts. The feel of this meets my standards. They are currently running a promotion, three graphic t-shirts for $60. And if you click on the link in the description down below, you'll save an additional 10% off. One of the graphic tees that I selected was this Universal Guardian, or Owl, and I also loved this design of a DNA strand turning into a tree. They also sell a plain t-shirts, and one of their sayings is stay inspired. If you are interested in purchasing this Owl shirt, check the description down below. There is a link to Into the AM. All right, let's take a look at the hardcovers first. And we have Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows in the Gryffindor House Edition. Now, I have not looked at any of the artwork on these books until now, so this is all first time for me. Now, something we haven't done in the past House Edition videos is look at the paperback right after the hardcover. So let's do that. All right, so in the center, we have a tombstone which says Ignotus Peverell, which is one of the three brothers who had the Deathly Hollows. The Deathly Hallows symbol is on that tombstone. And then kind of within like a tree, but also the tree is flames, is red flames. We see Hagrid holding Harry on the left side and Neville on the right side holding the sword of Gryffindor ready to slice off Nagini's head. This artwork here just features the battle at Hogwarts. There are witches and wizards having duels. We see Professor McGonagall on the bottom bringing the Hogwarts statues to life. There is a wand within the fire, probably the Elder Wand perhaps. A sorting hat on the bottom right-hand corner. It's kind of mixed with in the flames. This is just an epic cover right here. And then on the bottom, it says Hogwarts House Edition, JK Rowling, Bloomsbury. So you may be noticing that the paperback is red with black artwork and the hardcover is black with red artwork. One of the things that Bloomsbury did, which I still think is genius, is they alternated black or colored covers on the hardcovers and the paperbacks so that once you have all seven books, it created a striped pattern. I'll show you all of the sets together after we've gone through these eight books. But for example, Philosopher's Stone was released in red, Chamber of Secrets black, Prisoner of Azkaban red, etc. So when all of them are together, it creates that really cool striped pattern. On the back cover, we see the Gryffindor crest, as well as the traits of a Gryffindor, which are courage, bravery, and determination. Now, Levi Pinfold has done all of the covers for the seven books in all four of the houses. He has also done artwork on the insides of these books, too. As we've seen in the previous books, we have a beautiful illustration of Godric Gryffindor. There's some information about Gryffindor House. All of the books feature this map of Hogwarts and the Hogwarts grounds. See the Quidditch pitch there, Hogsmeade, the Whomping Willow, Hogsmeade Station, even the giant squid in the Black Lake. And then in the back of the book, there is a featured character, a featured Gryffindor. And let's see who it is in the Deathly Hallows book. I'm going to guess Neville, because that's a pretty important character for this book. And oh, there isn't a featured character. Wait, okay, so they've changed this up a little bit. There's not a featured character, but what they did do is bring back the quiz. There's a Gryffindor quiz back here. Now, now, the earlier books had quizzes and then they took the quizzes away, but now they have put them back. But there is still artwork in the back here and it features Harry, Ron, and Hermione in the tent on their hunt for Horcruxes. And then there's also a little bit of information about the heroes and heroines of Gryffindor House. 
And then when it comes to the paperback, the inside is identical to the hardcover. Let's take a look at Hufflepuff next. So it looks like all of the covers are going to feature Ignotus Peveril's tombstone in the center of the artwork. We still see witches and wizards dueling. The Ukrainian Iron Belly is on here. There are some wizards casting Patronus charms. One of the Patronuses is a hog, and I'm not quite sure who that would be. It's like a hog or a pig. So if you know whose Patronus is a pig or a hog, leave a comment down below. On the bottom of the artwork, we see Helga Hufflepuff's cup, and scattered around the Ukrainian Iron Belly are jewels and cups that have spilled out of Bellatrix Lestrange's vault. So it has a very magical plant sort of a theme too. On the left side, there are a bunch of different magical plants that are intertwined within all the swirls and everything. Possibly some Devil's Snare in there. Another epic cover that represents Deathly Hallows perfectly. Really beautiful artwork that just pops off of the page. On the back, we see the Hufflepuff crest with dedication, patience, and loyalty for the Hufflepuff traits. And here is the back of the paperback version, also featuring that Hufflepuff crest. Let's take a look at the inside of the Hufflepuff book, where we see Helga Hufflepuff featured. She looks so peaceful and calm standing there. One thing I love about the different founders' artwork is they all have all four animals, showing that they were united in creating Hogwarts. In the back, we have that Hufflepuff quiz, as well as information about the heroes and heroines of Hufflepuff House. And the artwork featured looks to be Lupin and Tonk, which is so sad and so cool that they were featured here. Now, Lupin wasn't a Hufflepuff, but this is just beautiful artwork that features the two of them, possibly in their final moments. This is just a beautiful piece that really shows the Battle of Hogwarts. They're holding hands, Death Eaters have surrounded them, and then we know what happens after that. Something else I love about these books is the text block. So on the paperbacks, the text block matches the house color. So Hufflepuff is always yellow, the side, the top, and the bottom. But on on the hardcovers, the side text block is in a striped pattern. But what's so cool about that is you can display these in a variety of ways. You can either display them spine out so that it's alternating colors, or you can display some with the spine out and the text block out. It's just like you can display these in different ways. You eagles are next. Ravenclaw House. When the Ravenclaw book is black, historically it's been very difficult to see the artwork. The first thing I see is the Lovegood's house. There are magical plants, dirigible plum trees. I can't believe I actually said the word dirigible correctly the first time. And even some signs that say keep off of the dirigible plums. In the center we see that same Ignotus Peveril tombstone with the Deathly Hollow symbol featured on the front as well as above it. We see a bird on the top which kind of looks like a phoenix, but it's a Patronus. Oh, it's a swan. It's a swan. So Cho Chang is on here. And then we see a rabbit Patronus, which is for Luna Lovegood. I see the gray lady on the bottom right hand corner. She, of course, is Rowena Ravenclaw's daughter, who told Harry where to find Ravenclaw's lost diadem, which was a horcrux that needed to be destroyed in order to get rid of Voldemort. If you have no idea what I just said, you really need to read the Harry Potter books. It's just battle mode. All of these covers are battle mode. The whole wizarding world is fighting whether you're good or you're evil you're fighting on these covers. And that represents Deathly Hallows perfectly. All right, let's take a look at the hardcover to see if I missed anything. The blue on the black is just so difficult for me to see personally. The bronze foiling just really pops out on this black cover. I mean, super, super shiny. The Niffler in you is probably freaking out. It's freaking out for me as I look at this book in person. Here is the text block for these two books. And on the back, we have the Ravenclaw crest with wit, learning, and wisdom. And here's the back for the paperback version. Now, another thing I didn't mention was the mascot on the spines of these books. Starting with Philosopher's Stone all the way to here, Deathly Hollows, the animal is in a different pose. So instead of just slapping on the exact same animal pose, they changed it up for each book, which was another cool thing that they did. All right, and then on the inside, we have that artwork of Rowena Ravenclaw, surrounded by the other Hogwarts house mascots. She is wearing her diadem on her head and holding a book, as Ravenclaw's value wisdom and learning. And the featured heroes and heroines look to be Luna Lovegood, Cho Chang, Padma Patil, and Michael Corner. So I think those are actually the four people we see on the front cover. 
And what's really cool is the eagle in the background of this cover artwork is in the same pose as the eagle that is on the spine of this book. And last but not least is Slytherin House. Okay, the thing that's popping out at me right now is a silver doe. So that's one of the chapter titles, The Silver Doe, which we later find out is Snape's Patronus. And there is a silver foiled doe on this cover. So it's exploding out from the trees in the forest of Dean. As I mentioned, it's silver foiled. That is Snape's Patronus. We also see a little pond underneath the Patronus, which looks to be like a wavy reflection of a sword. That's the sword of Gryffindor in that pond. Slytherin's locket is on the bottom of the tombstone. Obviously we still have that same tombstone design in the center. There's a big mixture of Patronuses on the left-hand side. I see what looks to be a lion, dragons, a, just a total mixture of Patronuses. On the bottom left-hand corner, we see Lord Voldemort himself, as well as other witches and wizards battling on the right Right hand side, we see Professor Slughorn. Oh, I see. So those are not Patronuses on the left hand side. That is Fiend Fire. And we see Draco, Crab, and Goyle on the cover. Goyle is casting Fiend Fire, which is cursed fire that comes in the form of animals and just destroys everything that it touches. So those are just all of the fire animals that are spreading throughout the Room of Requirement. That is very cool. I love that Levi Pinfold put that in this artwork. Here is the back cover of the hardcover Slytherin edition featuring the Slytherin house crest and pride, ambition, and cunning for the Slytherin house traits. Here is the back of the paperback version. And on the inside we have that portrait of Salazar Slytherin holding a snake as well as his locket and surrounded by all four of the Hogwarts animal mascots. All right, featured heroes and heroines from Slytherin House? I don't know, we're gonna find out. Ooh, we have Lord Voldemort. I wouldn't consider him a hero, but I guess that's who they chose to feature. And then next to him is Narcissa Malfoy and Bellatrix Lestrange, and then behind them are a bunch of Death Eaters. They are standing in the forest waiting for Harry Potter to arrive, and then behind Voldemort's head is Nagini in her protective orb. That's a very ominous piece of artwork right there. So that's it. We have all seven of the books in the different houses. It's crazy that this day is finally here. All right, let me grab the other books from my shelves and then show you the spines all together of each of these eight sets. Guys, I am literally giddy. This is the first time I've seen all of them together. We finally have full sets, one through seven. Here's Slytherin first, all of the hardcovers and all of the paperbacks. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, here they are. But this gives you a great example of that striped pattern I was talking about. And what's great is the pattern continues from hardcover to paperback. If you have all seven of the hardcover and paperbacks, it's black color, black color, black color, black color, black color, etc., etc., etc. And then there's the snake design I was talking about, how it changed for each book. Now, I also mentioned that the first few books were 20th anniversary editions, and then they changed the branding of it to just Hogwarts House editions. That brand change started at Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. So on the bottom here, you see Hogwarts House edition, but on Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone through Prisoner of Azkaban, we either see that 20th anniversary sticker, and then for Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets and Prisoner of Azkaban, we have 20th anniversary edition marked on the front cover. You badgers are next, all seven books, in both hardcover and paperback. The Hufflepuff sets are complete. These are very heavy. There are the different badger designs. It's cute, it's almost like he's doing a little backflip. And then there's the text block all together on all seven books. Here are all 14 of the Ravenclaw books. And the eagle in flight, starting at Chamber of Secrets, what I like is that the two eagles bookend each other on Philosopher's Stone and Deathly Hollows. And finally, the House of the Golden Trio, Gryffindor. The lions on Philosopher's Stone and Deathly Hallows also bookend each other. And then there are different designs for the other five books. Well, there we have it. All of the books are finally together. Check out this view of all of them on the shelves. Again, if you would like to see a review of Philosopher's Stone, Chamber of Secrets, Prisoner Mask Man, all the other house editions, check the description down below for links to those videos. If you would like to purchase these books, whether it be Philosopher's Stone or Deathly Hollows, also in the description down below are links to each of the books, both hardcover, paperback, 
in all four houses from Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone all the way to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. If you have not picked up any of these books yet, I highly recommend them for any Harry Potter collection. Not only are they cool to own, but they look beautiful on your shelves. And a lot of people do mixtures of houses, which also looks very cool. If you have any questions about Harry Potter or collecting, feel free to leave a comment down below. You can also join the Potter Collector community on Instagram at the Potter Collector or on Twitter at Potter Collector. Now it's time to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, keep collecting. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, welcome. You can subscribe right up here. You can also look at some previously posted content down here. If you have any questions about Harry Potter books or collecting, please feel free to contact me. I'm always happy to help. But for now, I must go. See you next time. Whoa, where'd he go? We finally have all of the house editions.